Hello, uh, my topic is uh, T2 flare bright rim sign in disembryoplastic neuroepithelial tumors. Uh, I'm Mohana Priya from Mahatma Gandhi Medical College and Research Institute, Pondicherry. So the affiliations, uh, <clears throat> I'm Dr. Mohana Priya A, PG resident, Department of Radio Diagnosis, Mahatma Gandhi Medical College and Research Institute. Disclosures, the authors declare that they have no conflicts of interest pertaining to the subject of this paper or the contents within. Abstract. Disembryoplastic neuroepithelial tumors or benign low-grade glioneural cortical-based tumors with good prognosis. <clears throat> the diagnosis of disembryoplastic neuroepithelial tumors can be made out without biopsy if it has a typical characteristics. We discuss the typical features of DNET and the T2 flare rim sign, which is considered to be specific for its diagnosis. Introduction, disembryoplastic neuroepithelial tumors commonly present with seizures, especially when in a temporal lobe location. Patients with DNETs typically present with long-standing treatment-resistant focal seizures, and in 90% of cases, the first seizure occurs before the age of 20. We discuss the MRI findings of a histological proven DNET, which show the classic T2 flare rim sign, and this was performed with 1.5 Tesla MR Philips Achiva machine. <clears throat> Discussion, uh, DNET is a classically is classically a cortical-based lesion, most commonly seen in temporal lobe with no significant mass effect or peritumeral edema. However, atypical cases may have edema or mass effect and ported a relatively poorer prognosis after resection. Typically described appearance on MR include T1 hypointense, T2 hyper, that is a bubbly appearance, a flare mixes signal intensity with a bright rim sign. Flare is helpful in <clears throat> identifying the small peripheral lesions which have similar intensity to CSF except for the periphery. Axial T1 weighted image. Here, this is showing a hypointense lesion in the right parietal region and which shows a a uh, hyper intense uh, signal in T2. And uh, here's a flare image typically showing the bright rim sign. <clears throat> so this is a histological picture, uh, shows the glyoneural element in the form of oligodendrocyte like cells, <clears throat> and uh, which is embedded in a mucoid matrix with floating neurons. The flare hyperintense ring sign was initially described by Palmer et al. as a thin rim of hyperintensity at the border of the lesion, separating it from the surrounding brain. The pathological correlation of this sign was found to be loosely packed glyoneral elements at the margin of the lesion. This is important as it has been shown that removal of the hyperintense ring during surgery can be relevant to avoid reoccurrence of the seizures. The presence of atypical features such as perilational edema and the persistence of the hyperintense ring post-surgery has been associated with the risk of malignant transformation and seizure recurrence post-operatively, although it is a rare occurrence. So here is a <clears throat> MR T2 flare image and other patients showing the central separation of the cystic component with the peripheral hyperintensity T2 flare rim sign. HPE of the margin shows the corresponding loose glioneural tissue. Conclusion, the distinction of DNET from other tumors is very important because patients benefit from complete resection, which is a most important prognostic factor predicting seizure freedom. The presence of the T2 flare bright rim sign is rather specific to DNET and can be aided in the accurate diagnosis and obviate the need for an invasive biopsy. The presence of other atypical features should be sought for, however, as they are associated with high recurrence rates and predisposed to malignant transformation, which although rare has been reported and confirmed with genome-wide methylation analysis. So these are my references. Thank you.